The spiritual lineage of the Universal White Brotherhood was founded by Master Bin Saduno, also known as Petr Konstantinov Danov of Bulgaria, in 1897. Master Bin Saduno taught that the qualities of humility, obedience, honesty, goodness, intelligence, and nobility are foremost in spiritual practice. He explained that one should walk the path of love, wisdom, and truth. The Universal White Brotherhood believes that God is in everything, in the stones, the plants, the water, the air, the animals, and the light. Following the principle of ahimsa or non-violence, Master Bin Saduno practiced and preached a vegetarian diet. The Master was also an accomplished musician and composer of many spiritual songs and compositions. Today we will read a second and final segment from Master Bin Saduno's lecture entitled For the Glory of God. The lecture was given to some of his disciples in Bulgaria on the highest mountain peak in Bulgaria of the entire Balkan Peninsula named Musala, which means near God or place for prayer. On that day, which happened to be the Master's birthday, the devoted truth seekers reached the high peak together with him and were given his inspirational words on the capacities of the human spirit and more. Let us now open our hearts for the wisdom of the beloved Master, Petr Danov. For the Glory of God, Sunday lecture given by Bain Sadunov, July 11, 1926, Musala Peak, Rilla Mountain, Bulgaria. You shall study the thermal ether, which has a connection with love. You shall study light, or the light ether, which has a connection with faith and wisdom. You shall work with the chemical ether, or with the volitional manifestations of the human soul, with water. The Asian alchemists made the following classifications. Earth is the life, water is the chemical processes, light is the air, and heat is the fire. People should master these elements, earth, water, air, fire, light, and heat. People should be able to make their own fire. If your heart is cold, you should be able to warm it up yourself inwardly. You should not wait for someone to warm it up from outside. You will say, let God do it. It is God who acts from within. God can do everything himself, but he wants to make us master our own selves alone. God wants us to love. In this way, you are learning a great art. If you have fire and can master it, you may even descend to hell. A person who cannot master water, who cannot master air, who cannot master light, and who cannot master warmth, such a person is suitable for nothing. These are all opportunities when it comes to humans. If people do not use these opportunities, they will accomplish as much as the fish. It lives in water, but it does not master it. They will accomplish as much as the mole, it lives in earth, but does not master it. What have birds accomplished? They live in the air, but they do not master it, and so far, they have accomplished nothing. They have no culture. Hence, we are required to study these forces. However, there is one danger in revealing secrets to you. You may not be able to use them reasonably. Thus, I say, when you see a person, you shall not pay attention to the weaknesses but to the virtues of this person. You often say, I thought that you were a friend of mine, but you have such and such weakness. No, to understand someone, we have to look at virtues, because what is bad in a good person is only a shadow in their life. Only an extremely good person can have shadows in their life. Only such a person can provoke evil to be manifested. I say, a noble character should be formed in each of you. Your souls should be widely open, so that whoever meets you may feel that you are a breath of freshness and life. Inner fullness and goodness should exist in you without any effort. You should manifest yourselves naturally in a divine way. 
You should be good in your very being without wanting to be such. You should be good in such a way that even when sometimes you do not want to be good, you will still be. And if you do not want to do good, you will still be unable not to do it. I call such people good. The most important thing for you now is to retain something from this excursion to Musala. What will you retain from this day? Will you remember anything from it one day when you become 60-70 years old? You may say, leave our white hair alone. These matters have nothing to do with it. Where is your faith then? Not only you must not grow old, but you have to rejuvenate each and every day. Not only do you not have to die, but you have to come back to life every day. You have to live in joy constantly. And when you go to the other world, you will climb Musala again. However, you will see it in a different form there. It is essential that we are making this excursion, because we have certain matters on earth that we have to resolve. Every ascent to Musala gives us an impulse. Here we are at the summit and no one can stop us. Our Elan is so great that we can take over the summit from anywhere. We are at a height where the Lodge of Black Darkness is powerless. It can do nothing as we will break through everywhere. An Elan has to be present in every person, in all of us. The mistake that all of you make is that you do not have Elan. You must have an idea. If you stop at the smallest difficulty, there is not an Elan in you. If you have Elan, you will be like birds, you will come by and fly away. If you have an Elan, if you have an idea, no devil can stop you. So the high ideal, striving towards God, brings warmth. You see, even here at Musala, at this height we have a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. What does it show physically? When we add up 2 plus 2, we get the number 4, the strongest number at the highest place. The fire of these energies, of these forces, act in one square. Whatever ends up there gets destroyed. So here we have the square of life. At 22 degrees Celsius, life can destroy all obstacles that may come across one's way. Here, nature demonstrates this principle. Everything is destroyed at Musala. It means that the number 22 corresponds to Musala. There are also 22 letters in the Jewish alphabet. The Jews interpret their entire philosophy in line with the Kabbalah. Therefore, all separate units live for the common unit. The common unit is God with whom we are connected. And all our ideas are corrected in line with this common unit. We constantly think of God, but we do not realize it, and there is no need to do so. However, a sacred idea is lodged in us. When we come to a certain place, we always correct our mistakes exactly according to this idea. God is the one who corrects our errors. God says, do not do this, and you happily accept it. There is no person on earth who is not corrected by God. Sometimes you cry until God comes, looks at you, holds your hand, and you are released from all hardships of life. Dedicated viewers, we are grateful for your pleasant company for today's Words of Wisdom. 